Consider the following formula. Which of the following statements is true for this formula? To solve this question, we're going to need to graph it. And to graph it, we need to label our axes in terms of f and g. Normally, our x-axis is our cause, while our y-axis is our effect. So if we look at our answer choices to see which variable is affecting the other, it seems to be f. f is the cause that affects our variable g. If f is positive, then g is this. If f is negative, then g is this. So we can label our axes accordingly. f is our x-axis and g is our y-axis. Now there's one more thing before we start to graph this, and that's rearranging this function so that it's a bit easier to work with. g is being subtracted, so we can do opposite operations and add g to both sides. This will cancel, leaving us with 2f equals g. It's a bit easier to work with. So now let's find our intercepts, which means we're going to plug in 0 for each variable and solve for the other. But there's only one problem. When we go to do this, let's say I plug in 0 for f over here, and I plug in 0 for g over here. What's going to happen is no matter what we do, we're going to get 0 for both of these functions g equals 0, and f equals 0. So that means our only intercept is in the origin, 0, comma, 0. So that makes it tricky to graph. However, it does eliminate two answer choices. Answer choice A says f is always greater than g, which is incorrect, because here there's one instance where they are both exactly the same. And same thing with answer choice D. f is always lower than g. That's not true, because there's one instance where they are exactly the same. So how do we graph this from here? Well, we could try plugging in other values to the function to get some different coordinate points. I would recommend the number 2. So I'm going to rewrite my function twice down here. And then we're going to plug in 2 for both f, whoops, for both f and g. And the reason I suggested the number 2 is so that when we go to do this division right here, opposite operations, these cancel out, we would have the whole number 1 instead of, we, if we would have done number 1, we would have gotten 1 half, and that's just a bit trickier to graph with. This way you get a whole number. And then over on this side, 2 times 2 would give us 4 for g. Now to make these coordinate points, be very careful, because we plugged in 2 for f, and we got 4 as a result for g. So that means if f is our x and g is our y, we should order it as f comma g or 2 comma 4. Then for our other graph over here, our other function, we plugged in 2 for g and got 1 as our result. So again, f comma g should be 1 comma 2. Now I've plotted our three points. We have 0 comma 0 from trying to find our intercepts earlier. Then we have 2 comma 4 where I went to the right 2 and up 4. Then we have 1, 2 to the right 1, up 2. And now we can use this graph to help us figure out which answer is correct. Is it B or C? B says if f is positive, g is negative. Well, let's take a look at the quadrants where we have values from this graph. We have values in quadrant 1 where both f and g are positive, And we have values in quadrant 3 where the opposite is true f and g are both negative. We do not have any values present in the two quadrants where they can have opposite signs. Right in quadrant 2, we have negative f, but a positive g. And in quadrant 4, we would have positive f and negative g. But there are no values there. So b is incorrect. And by process of elimination, that leaves answer choice C. If f is positive, g is positive too. And that's a true statement, because we have values in quadrant 1, where f and g are both positive all the time. So c is our correct answer.